Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, Cyan, if there's any problems, please let me know. And just give me two seconds. Okay. Hi, guys. Jackie M here. And this is the final in my series of live broadcasts. And we're doing Laksa today. And also, not only that, I'm going to be announcing the winner of the optimum thermal cook that I've been featuring in all my recipes. Um, and uh, so stick around to the end of this broadcast to find out which one of you have won uh, one of these valued at Australian $1,000. And also, not only that, I'm going to be announcing a, uh, an exclusive offer for everyone who signed up through the sign-up page uh, that was set up. It's actually still not too late to sign up. You have until this weekend. So if you haven't already signed up for this page, uh, Cyan, my assistant, is going to post the link on uh, Facebook Live and also on all social media so that you can jump in and sign up so you can uh, take advantage of this special deal for this optimum thermal call. Now, um, again, uh, I'm actually, I know we've been having some technical issues running on uh, Facebook. So if you have any problems at all, if the audio goes wonky like it did the last two weeks, I'm very, very sorry. But hopefully it will be better tonight. Um, I still, I, I haven't got the kind of uh, uh, hardware I, I really need, but I've made some changes which hopefully will mitigate some of the problems I've been experiencing. But if you do have problems, Cyan will post the link for everyone to hop over to YouTube Live and watch it via the YouTube link. And you know, you can still watch it on Facebook. It'll just be as though you were watching a YouTube video on Facebook. So uh, just um, a shout out to everyone. Uh, Cyan, if you are with me, if you can watch the audio on the Facebook live stream, and if and when it goes wonky, just let me know and I'll see what I can do over at my end. But failing that, hop onto YouTube live and watch it there. Okay, just give me two seconds. I just want to check some messages. Okay, um, audio is okay, everyone hear me okay? Okay, let's get started. Now, like I said, we're doing laksa lemak, uh, laksa nyonya. If you're familiar with Malaysia, um, most people are familiar with this version of laksa from Malaysia, which is what we call in Malaysia uh, curry laksa, right? And curry laksa is, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it's kind of like a... Uh, glorified curry uh, sauce with noodles and all that, turning with uh, tofu puffs and with some garnishes. And curry laksa uses kind of like a curry powder base for it. But when I first came to Australia, my mom, because I mean, and this is going to, any Malaysian that you know is going to concede uh, if uh, you met them here in Australia that when they arrived in Australia, they never bothered to uh, learn how to make laksa their whole lives living in Malaysia because it's one of those uh, dishes that are so cheap to eat out, um, you know. And um, because it's so cheap, nobody ever learns how to make it. Same with a lot of Malaysian dishes that Malaysia is famous for, things like roti canai and all that. So a lot of Malaysians, uh, when they go overseas and realize, oh, I can't buy laksa uh, for a dollar, around here and that sort of stuff, how do I make it? This is essentially what happened with my family when we came over here. And my stepmom, again, like, tried to be, I guess, um, a little bit, um, just give me two seconds, tried to be a, a, a little bit, tried to, uh, my, my stepmom basically tried to be a little bit, uh, uh, I guess, creative. And essentially she made a, a diluted curry sauce for our laksa. And I, I, I never really kind of like, um, you know, uh, wasn't a huge fan of it. So it just tasted to me like a really like watered down curry sauce. So it never really tasted like the laksa I knew growing up back home. So um, 
just give me two seconds. I'm going to check my Facebook feed um, because I'm told that there's a bit of a lag on, on there. I just want to make sure that I am connected. Yeah, it seems to be I'm connected correctly. Okay. Okay, we'll see how we go. But, um, okay. Um, Cyan, so just keep uh, uh, letting me know if it does play up again. So apparently it's just a little bit of a lag on Facebook. Now, um, the last time that I ended up uh, kind of like endearing myself to after a lot of experimentation is uh, what I would call a laksa nyonya. Nyonya in Malaysia is kind of like a, a, a niche cuisine that's uh, basically um, a, a fusion uh, Malay Chinese kind of like a cuisine uh, brought about by the intermarriage of the Malays and the Chinese hundreds of years ago. And essentially what they did was they combined a lot of the uh, ingredients and cooking styles of the two cultures and, and came up with something called nyonya food, right? And within that, there are a lot of subsets as well. So depending on which part of Malaysia you come from, the nyonyas up north will have a different, um, you know, nuance to their recipes to the not nyonyas down south, right? The two concentrations in Malaysia are in Penang and uh, in Malacca. Now, this particular laksa nyonya is probably closest in its character to uh, what you would find in Malacca. Right, so again, this is something that I have kind of like, uh, I guess, um, played around with a little bit. So this is my own creation essentially, but I call it laksa nyonya because it's closer to it. And uh, the characteristics of nyonya food is that it incorporates a lot of fresh ingredients. So no, uh, no curry powder in this. And also the other characteristic, characteristic of it is that it uses a lot, uh, the Malacca version of nyonya food certainly anyway, uses <laughs> <laughs> That's my son, Noah. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, Malacca, Malacca nyonya food is quite rich and creamy, coconutty. Okay, um, so those are the two characteristics of this particular version of laksa that I'm going to be making. He has been so good up until now, and now, now that we're on air, he wants the attention, so he's start, starting to tear the place down. Okay, so if anyone, anyone in Australia, if you caught us this morning, caught me this morning, he was supposed to be on A on Channel 10 this morning, but he decided to, uh, again, throw a tantrum, so they had to take him off set while I proceeded with my interview sure. with the panel on Studio 10. So you can actually catch the replay online. I'll post the link at some point. But it's a little bit embarrassing for me because I hate watching myself on camera. Certainly, I, I almost never watch myself on TV. Um, and I've been in a few shows. But <coughs> someone messaged me, and I bet he's watching. He oh, messaged me and said, oh, you know, my wife thought you looked fat today. It's been great. That's uh, uh, you know, a great point for, for encouragement. So I'm avoiding it like the play, but I'm, I'm told that people enjoyed the interview this morning um, immensely. So uh, try and catch it. Now, uh, the ingredients that we're using for this particular laksa are. Um, no, please, please, please. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, if you would know anything about me, you would know that uh, I do try and incorporate no no way into my life, but uh, it's my business. So I'm trying to put everything out of his reach. Like I said, he's been really good, but I think he's, he knows, he's, he's at that age where he knows when I'm uh, online, so he tries to kind of like uh, distract me. It's a little bit, a little bit cheeky. But okay, so uh, Laksa Nyonya uses uh, fresh ingredients, uh, things that you might be familiar with by now, things like uh, galanga. This is what galanga looks like, if you can see it. It's uh, quite woody, quite hard. It's like a variety of ginger. You maybe will find it at Southeast Asian grocery stores, and failing that, if you can't find this, you should be able to find galango powder. And in fact, when I had my Malaysian restaurant, I used to use a powder version, and that's because I didn't have a thermal cook back in the day. Uh, I, you know, processing these kinds of things are, uh, can be really tough on your regular blender. Uh, turmeric this is what the turmeric looks like. Again, a variety of ginger. It adds, um, you know, a lot of uh, yellow pigmentation to your food. Lemongrass, everyone knows lemongrass by now. Okay, there's a, a pretty sad and dried out bunch of lemongrass. 
And I want, I, I, the reason why I'm showing you this is because I wanted to kind of point out the fact that uh, with lemongrass, usually they always say use uh, the bottom three or four inches. I, I, I tend to kind of like stretch it a little bit more. But uh, if ever you uh, want to cook satay or something like that, what they use is what they do in some parts of Malaysia is they use the ends of this as like a basting uh, uh, brush for satay but on the grill because it adds a nice uh, lemongrassy flavor. So cut it off over here and then dip it in oil and then use it as a base next time you do a barbecue meat or something like that would give a nice lemongrassy flavor even if it's not satay that you're grilling. Okay, something you keep in mind. Um, onion, of course, over here. And this is what we call in Malaysia laksa leaves. I had to make a trip to Kabramata, which is the Vietnamese central. Um, okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm being told that um, Facebook seems to be lagging a bit, and I don't know why it's doing that. So, uh, Cyan, if you can uh, just post a uh, YouTube link, just let me pop over and just quickly check the CPU usage on this here to see if it's struggling. Okay, um, it looks like it is, and that's not good. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see how we go. Um, Cyan, let me know if it's still playing out. All I've done is I basically had nothing open except two tabs on my internet browser and I've closed it down to just one tab, the tab that I'm running my broadcast from, so hopefully it will be better. But anyway, let's get started all over again, uh, for those who missed everything, uh, because of internet problems or um, connection problems. But uh, we're making laksa nyonya, and I'm making what's called laksa nyonya. It's essentially uh, probably closest in character to the laksa you would find in Malacca, which is a uh, down south, uh, the southern part of the peninsula of Malaysia, quite close to my hometown of Surumban. And uh, it uses a lot of fresh herbs, and also it uses um, a fair bit of coconut milk, coconut cream, okay? And this is what uh, we're going to be used. This is what we call laksa leaves. And you may struggle to find this in uh, your regular Asian grocery store. I usually have to make a special trip out to Cabramatta to pick this up. Um, otherwise, I have to special order it from my, uh, my, my suppliers elsewhere, okay? Laksa leaves in Vietnamese grocery stores, they are called uh, Vietnamese mint, okay? And the scientific name is polygonum leaves. And, uh, but they just give, give a nice, sharp, almost soury um, aroma to your dishes. It's used in uh, laksa quite a lot, not generally in laksa, in curry laksa, which is the laksa that you would be familiar with if you live in Australia and go to your regular Malaysian eatery. The standard laksa that you get is usually what we call curry laksa, which essentially is kind of like a watered down curry soup, okay? So I've got these ingredients, um, and the other thing I'm going to add to it are some garlic, and this is what I want to show you in particular. This is something uh, that some people confuse with balacham, which is uh, dried, sh uh, which is uh, shrimp paste powder or shrimp paste. This is dried shrimp, okay? Um, if you can see it, and all of this is essentially, if you can imagine, shrimp that's uh, been salted and then dried out in the sun. This is a, the cheapest version I can find, and the, usually the, the price is dictated by the size. This is the smallest, and this usually you can find in the uh, refrigerated or freezer section of your Asian grocery store. Um, the more expensive ones, the larger ones, they sometimes don't need refrigeration. So sometimes you can find them on the shelves, but they're quite expensive. Okay, these ones need refrigeration because I think they've got a little bit more moisture in them than your average dried shrimp. So you do need to keep them in the fridge. And I've just basically rinsed this out a little bit just to get some of the grit out and get some of the saltiness out, okay? Um, if you can't find that, leave it out, right? Um, but the dried shrimp is different to balachan, which is a uh, shrimp paste. And again, if you followed my previous broadcast, I use a shortcut, I use dried shrimp, uh, sorry, I use shrimp paste powder. 
Um, for this particular recipe, you can in fact use Thai shrimp paste, and you can in fact really, if you're really lazy, you don't eat and you can only get the blood chunk, the shrimp paste block. You don't even need to toast it until it gets to this stage because you're going to fry everything up anyway. The only caveat I would point out is because it's quite sticky, um, is that it may not blend properly and you might get chunks of it when you cook. Okay, so you might want to process it a little bit more in your thermocool. I'm just going to turn this on. And the other ingredients I'm using are some chicken powder, right? Uh, I've covered this in my previous broadcast. It's uh, similar to using chicken cubes, stock cubes, and you can leave it out. In, if you don't use this, just a little bit of salt in its place is fine. I just find that the chicken uh, powder just adds a little bit more body to your food. But again, like I said, you know, if you think it's not, I guess, you know, um, healthy enough, leave it out. And this is just a bit of sugar. I've mentioned in my previous broadcast that uh, Malaysian cooking usually uh, balances out the saltiness with a little bit of sugar, not too much, but uh, just enough to kind of like temper the, the, the flavor a little bit. And this is uh, uh, chili paste. And the way I make this chili paste is just um, simply by uh, soaking dried chilies. I've actually got a YouTube video that hopefully Cyan has shared that you can watch. But um, this is just basically what you do, dried, dried chilies, dried big chilies, hence the dark color. If you're using dried small chilies, they'll be too fiery for this particular recipe, right? So you want the dried big chilies, usually they look flat and they look dry, and you can buy them in big packets. Um, they usually say soak it in water. I like to boil it in water for about 10 minutes. Uh, Keep the lid covered, let it cool down. It will be soft enough for you to process then. So the way you process it, throw it in your thermal cook or in a regular blender with just enough water to get it to this consistency. Okay, now I'll just hold it up close so you can see it. Okay, right. And, um, and I've mentioned before, if you're just joining us now, um, if at any point the uh, Facebook broadcast goes wonky because I seem to be struggling with my Facebook broadcast all through, um, then just watch this broadcast through the YouTube link, if you don't mind, which will also be shared on Facebook. Okay, um, just let me hop over and just quickly check the uh, processes to see how they're running a little bit. Um, Okay, fingers crossed it's okay. Like I said, the biggest problem has been the audio. Um, it just is very, very, running these live broadcasts are just very, very late, um, processor intensive. And I've got my ThinkPad X1 Yoga, which runs beautifully, but I use it to run my YouTube broadcast. But uh, it seems as though uh, some of my other machines can't really quite handle the CPU intensive work involved in running a, a, a a live broadcast like this. So I'm just going to throw all these into the thermal cook. So I've got the tougher ingredients. What did I do with them? Um, let me have a look. Okay. So what I need is like about an inch of the, uh, there it is, uh, turmeric and um, galangal in there, and the lemongrass. I'm going to throw these in. And now, I think it was Gay who suggested, Gay who's one of my, um, one of the people who've been following this, who suggested using the smoothie function on this to get, okay, yes. Okay, let's try this. Okay, did not like that. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Okay. Just move this around here. And just make sure I've got this closed properly. Maybe. Now we stop. Yeah, goodbye. Touch to mama, baby. Let's try it again. Okay, let's try the normal function. Let's see how we go. It's 
just telling me that I'll, I haven't set this up properly. I'm doing something wrong here. I'm going to switch out the gel and see how I go with the other one. get fresh ingredients like the fresh lemongrass and fresh galangal. I'll do what I used to do, which is to use the uh, powdered version. Easier to come by. I only use like half the amount suggested in the recipe. Okay. And I used to even use uh, dried or fried shallots for this recipe. For my business because it was just too labor intensive. No, we can stop. So come over to Mama. It's too labor intensive and too uh, costly to be using a uh, fresh galangal and all that as well. Okay. Okay. So it's a little bit more. Smoothie function. And this is what it looks like. So over here, you can see it. And I'm going to add some of the other ingredients. I could probably work this a little bit more. Just to get the lemongrass a little bit more fine. You don't really want to eat like a chunky bits of herbs in your. In your laksa. Okay, so that's much better. You can see that. And the other thing, speaking of chunky, uh, what we call rumpa or the herb, um, the, 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 the spice mixture, I went to Sabah a couple of years ago or last year. And this is just onion. I went to Sabah, which is in Borneo, the Borneo part of Malaysia, last year. And I was taught some recipes by a Kadazan chef. Kadazan is one of the ethnic groups in Sabah, one of the major ethnic groups in Malaysia and they actually like their like their um, herbs and all that a little bit chunky they like to be able to chew onto all these when they're eating their their, their curries or whatever it is isn't that, isn't that interesting okay let's just look this Okay. A little bit longer. So that was a total of about 30 seconds, including um, the original batch. And the dry shrimp should go in as well. I could probably have put it in earlier. And just blend it. Now I could have done the chili paste uh, at the same time as well, like if you know, if I were making chili paste. So I prefer to kind of like batch process these 
and then freeze them. So when I need them, I just pull them out for whatever recipe. But it's super, super easy. So just have a look on my YouTube channel, how to make chili paste, if uh, you can't find the link that Shasayan is about to share. So that's what I've got so far. So I'm just going to add the chili paste in there. And this is just, like I said, just big chilies. If you want uh, big chilies have the right color, the right hue to your laksa, but it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily add the, um, the, 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 the heat in it as well. So if you want some strong, uh, spicy laksa, you can mix it up with some dry small chilies or even fresh small chilies, okay? So I added the chicken powder. I'm just gonna throw in the sugar and the balacha, right? And I'm going to add some oil to this. And laksa usually takes quite a bit of oil, okay? Because uh, I know a lot of Australians get a little bit bearded out, but we all just uh, kind of like drive to eat healthy and all that. They like to uh, cut down on their oil. And in fact, even in Malaysia, usually you go like, uh, people tell the hawkers they're their favorite hawkers cut down on the oil in their fried noodles or whatever sort of thing. But laksa traditionally, so I'm just going to cook this. Laksa traditionally does actually, you know, if you want it to look right, it should have a nice sheen of like bright red uh, chili oil on top. Okay, I'm just going to turn that off. I'm going to put this on the auto saute setting, which cooks it for only for five minutes, but I would prefer, preferably like to cook it for a little bit longer. So this is cooking, and one characteristic of nyonya laksa is that we have fresh shredded cucumber in it. Okay, so I've just got cucumber, and the reason why I haven't pre-shredded is because I want to show you something. This is just a mandolin, and of course you can get any kind of grater, but this is how popular with the Asians. If you go to your, uh, if you go shopping at your local Asian grocery store, hopefully in the UK you can find these as well, but it's just a very simple kind of mandolin, and uh, and it just basically cuts everything evenly, right? And this is what I used to use for my laksa at my restaurant. And in fact, it's just very easy to use. So it just gives you some shredded cucumber, okay? So like I said, if your association with laksa is uh, the curry laksa, you wouldn't usually see shredded cucumber in okay? Now, uh, back to the shrimp, uh, the dried shrimp, because like I said, a lot of people confuse it with a uh, shrimp paste. I just want to show you the uh, the label of the brand that I buy, this is what it looks like. Just a dried, tiny shrimp, hopefully you can see it properly on screen. Okay, and there's like a big one kilo bag. I don't know if this particular variety comes in any smaller packs, but you can freeze it and it will last pretty much indefinitely. Okay? So we're going to see how this goes. And the other thing I want to talk about is the kind of noodles that go into laksa. Um, now, uh, this, if you're, if, you, if you're familiar with like uh, your regular laksa, the most common laksa, laksa noodle is something called vermicelli or rice sticks, okay? This is what it looks like. This has been soaked in hot water for a bit. And like I said, in Malaysia, traditionally at your regular curry laksa stall, they'll have this kind of noodles as the, the main offering, and usually they'll have Hokkien noodles, which are the uh, yellow, oily egg noodles as well. And so usually, uh, if you don't specify, they'll assume you want it with this noodle. Uh, but uh, sometimes they actually mix the two of them together. So they'll have predominantly this noodle with maybe a clutch of Hokkien noodles. And sometimes you want just Hokkien noodles, so you have to tell them. Um, but those are the two main kinds of noodles that go into a curry laksa. But of course, I think personally, noodles to me are very, very subjective. You know, whatever you feel works, you, you, you prefer, go for it. When I had my Malaysian restaurant, and I used to sell this nyonya laksa. Um, I had a very ardent uh, customer order the laksa all the time, and then finally she sent me an email one day saying, oh look, 
Um, I'm from Malaysia. I love your laksa, but you know, you really should be using what they call bihun or rice sticks or uh, vermicelli instead of the noodles that you use. Because in my restaurant, um, it's actually because I didn't have any use for rice sticks in any of my other menu offerings. I basically just use fresh rice noodles in my laksa and that upset her and she felt the inclination to send me an email, which I thought was quite funny. The Malaysians everywhere are very, very passionate about their food and they'll tell you what's authentic and what's not authentic. Um, but sometimes I think they take it too far. I mean, uh, I completely understand the whole idea of chicken balances as to authenticity, but you know, it's like someone complaining if you were, you know, if you have instead of having spaghetti bolognese, you prefer fettuccine bolognese, and you know, they're telling you it's not authentic, something like that on that basis. I think a lot of it's just, you know, much ado about nothing. Um, so this is cooking. Now, what I usually do, I make the laksa paste. And then I bottle it into jars. And if you remember the first uh, broadcast we did, we did the sambal balacha. This is what I've got left of it still, right? So next time you go shopping at your $2 store or your homeware store or even Ikea, these ones are picked up from Ikea, uh, get a few of these jars handy because if you've got a thermal coat, uh, it'll be perfect for making all these kinds of pastes in advance. Uh, stick them in jars and keep them in the fridge. They'll keep for a good couple of months, and then you've got laksa ready to go all the time, right? And the way I usually would use the laksa uh, is I would reconstitute it again in my thermal cook, and what I would do is um, this basket that goes in there. I will stick it. Okay, let's see how this is going. Okay, I want to fry it a little bit longer and I think I want to add more chili paste to this as well. I don't know why the recipe says only a quarter of a cup, I'm sure, because um, when I pass the recipe over to Fruity to send out, basically my recipes start out in like a, a commercial uh, uh, volumes because so basically the straight out of my uh, my business, right? Um, so when I post recipes for the use of these kinds of broadcasts, I have to scale them all down and sometimes we may make mistakes in terms of like uh, reducing everything down to, uh, to, to to what they should be. So just give me two seconds. I'm just going to add more chili paste. I'm just going to grab this out over here. And don't forget, if you just join us, uh, I'm going to be announcing the winner of the ultimate thermal cook. If you're one of those people who signed up for the series by the um, the through the page, so I'm just adding maybe another quarter cup of uh, chili paste to this, and I'm going to put this a little bit longer. So back to the saute. Setting and I'm just going to leave that top cap slightly ajar just to let some of the steam out so it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, kind of make the curry paste too too wet, right? And um, speaking of laksa, if you've travelled around Malaysia and I know some of you have, you would know there's actually in fact uh, practically a different version of laksa in just about every state in Malaysia. Um, so while well, most Australians, most Australians are familiar with curry laksa, some of you I know are familiar with uh, what they call Penang laksa or Assam laksa, and this particular laksa does not use coconut milk at all. It's sour and uses a, a, a shredded fish. It uses usually mackerel or something similar like that. And it's got a, a lot of very exotic fresh herbs and spices, and it uses what they call rice spaghetti. So they're um, basically noodles that are kind of like um, how would you describe it? They're made from rice flour, but they're round. Okay, they're they're like uh, spaghetti but uh, thicker and uh, very soft and silky. 
and just absolutely beautiful, but it's nothing like any laksa you will know, nothing like the curry laksa that you're familiar with. And then there are other types of laksa. When I was in Kalantan, which is the northernmost state closest to Thailand, uh, Kalantan, before it became a part of Malaysia, it used to be a, a protectorate or something like of a of the Siamese kingdom. So it used to be associated with the Siamese uh, empire, Siamese uh, basically uh, rule. It was under their dominion, so it was kind of like a, one of its uh, protectorates. Okay. So Kelantanese food has a lot of Thai influence to it, and Kelantanese laksa is very similar. If you know about Thai food, if you've been to a Thai restaurant, you have uh, a galango coconutty chicken soup. Um, Kelantan laksa is not too dissimilar to that, but so it's got, it's, you know, it's, it's bringing out with a lot of other ingredients to make it interesting, but the base essentially is like white and it's sour, okay? It's white because of the coconut cream and it's sour. Now we, now we come to Mama, please. She's trying to get my attention. Now we, stop, please. Okay, yeah, so uh, that's Kelantanese laksa, um, and all the way down south in Johor, which is the state uh, right next door to Singapore in the south, Johor laksa is virtually like spaghetti bolognese in its appearance. Um, it's so thick that apparently traditionally it's eaten by hand, but nowadays people use uh, utensils. Um, but I'll make Johor laksa and it tastes absolutely beautiful. Again, use, it uses shredded fish um, as the base, um, and it's almost like a gravy. And interestingly enough, it uses actual spaghetti, okay, as the uh, type of noodle that goes with it. So um, nobody really knows for sure where that it Italian influence came about. Some people say it's because one of the Johor princes, sultans, actually married an Italian wife at some stage and she introduced the state to spaghetti, right? So uh, these are all the kinds of uh, interesting trivia. And in between, there's lots and lots of different versions of laksa. Now in Singapore, there's something called katong laksa. Katong laksa. Katong is a, basically a, 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 a town in Singapore and uh, or suburbs. And katong laksa is made famous by uh, the fact that you use rice spaghetti again um, but they're cut into little snips and you eat them as food. And I just want to say, Noah, Noah, come to Mama, please. Come to Mama. Okay, so this is uh, smelling really, really nice. And I'm going, uh, I've actually cheated because I don't want to spend too much time boiling water and all that. Um, but um, I've pre coated the noodles and the garnishes that go with it as well. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is the. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. And the other thing about Patong Laksa is that they do use laksa leaves in it, but they cut them into shreds and they um, um, sprinkle them on top and just shreds as in that into little, uh, they basically mince the uh, curry, uh, the laksa leaves uh, and put it on top. So it has a really nice herbal infusion to it, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit different. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Right, you see the yellow from the from the turmeric and the red from the chili. I'm gonna take some of this out. And just take some laksa soup out of this, the rest, okay? I'm just gonna make, Probably just enough for one serve. 
just so you can see what it looks like. And I'll add some water to this. And some coconut cream. You can use coconut milk too if you like. Oops. Now, when I first came to Australia, I worked at this, um, during my uni days, I worked at this place called uh, Lee's Malaysian. It's quite famous in Sydney. And they have been around selling Malaysian takeaway food since like the 70s. And the laksa were, were very, very popular. But they used, um, instead of coconut milk or coconut cream, they actually use, uh, okay. They actually, um, instead of coconut milk or coconut cream, they used uh, fresh milk as their base, okay? And I'm just gonna get this going. And the reason for that was because when they first started operating back in the 70s here in Australia, um, you couldn't get coconut milk, okay? I just basically want to bring this to a boil. Now, if I were having this for lunch, bearing in mind I've got the laksa paste in a jar, I pull it out of the fridge, um, stick a couple of spoonfuls of this in there, water, coconut milk, and I'll stick this basket in there and I'll put an egg in there um, to go, go with that. And the point of it is to basically um, steam or boil an egg, right? And then I'll stack the steamer on top, stick my fresh rice noodles, which is what I prefer, uh, fresh rice noodles don't need to be boiled, they just need to be uh, steamed. Fresh rice noodles in there. If you want to add some Chinese bok choy or whatever, you can throw that in there as well. Um, not right away, because we want to cook the eggs. So the focus is to cook the eggs. Um, that will take about 10, 12 minutes, right? And um, if you want some fresh prawns and that sort of stuff, put it in, in the basket as well, okay? But on top, you want the noodles, you want the uh, vegetables, if the greens, if you're using it. And then you want to basically cook it at 120 degrees so that it's hot enough to steam up everything. And then in 10, uh, 10 12 minutes, you can uh, tip everything into a bowl, pour the soup over, and that's your laksa. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not really much of an Instagram person, but if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see a lot of examples of my, what I eat for lunch of dinner. And essentially, a lot of the time, because I eat a lot of noodles, um, they're basically made um, from using this method, whether it's laksa or whether it's prawn noodle soup. And I haven't had the chance in this series to cover prawn noodle soup, but um, essentially I use my thermal cook to do the same to make prawn paste, okay? And prawn paste essentially is just kind of like prawn shells that I saute in here with garlic, lots and lots of garlic and chicken powder and a little bit of sugar and pepper. Um, saute in that and then crunch the shells using the smoothie setting in here um, until it's completely pulverized and then I, uh, it's, it's fried up and then I, I box it up or I stick it in jars and then like, uh, you know, when I, every time I feel like it, stick a couple of spoonfuls, add water to it and then do the same with the, the noodles, the prawns and the, 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 the Chinese greens, usually gumbo or something like that and that's my corn noodle soup lunch for the day. I do strain out the soup because even though the shells are pulverized, they, they're still a little bit greedy when you eat it, okay? So what I do is keep all the noodles, all the other ingredients in a bowl, and then I strain the soup through a sieve into the bowl, and that's my prawn noodle soup. You'll see a lot of pictures of that on my Instagram feed because I eat that a lot. Um, so my Instagram feed is just Jackie and Sydney, right? So we're counting down to when we're going to be uh, announcing the winner of the thermo cook so i hope you're watching whoever it is who won but uh, i'm going to pull up your name just to make sure i don't make a mistake right and don't forget the rest of you if you want to buy your thermo cook um sign or post the link to my affiliate account and if you're one of those people who signed up through the foodie pretty page you know the one that told you you were in a chance for uh to win a thermo cook if you're one of those people who signed up through that link, um, if you buy a thermo cook over the next um, over the next two weeks, I believe is what they say. If you buy a thermo cook over the next two weeks, they will automatically um, send you out. Uh, not only will you get the discounted price using the code 
the, the, the coupon code, which will cut down your price of a thermal cook to $849. But if your name is on the list, you will automatically get an additional jug as well, like what I've got here. And each of these jugs are worth $299. So you can imagine that's a huge, huge saving in itself. So make sure you, uh, you know, if, if you do plan to buy a thermal cook after the series, you've got a couple of weeks to think about it. But if your name is on the list, and it's not too late to sign up through that uh, lead page, by the way, which uh, Cyan will post the link to. So Cyan, if you're watching, if you can post the link to the sign up page for the thermal cook. Like I said, that's the, the same page as the competition page. You've got them until this weekend, the Saturday and sign Sunday, to add your name to the list. And then if you decide to buy a thermal cook, you get a free extra job worth $299 on top of the discounted price that you're going to be paying by coding the code on their website that cuts your thermal cook price down to $849, right? Let's see how this goes. I'm just gonna turn this off. Okay. That's my laksa suit. I want a little bit more oil to this. So I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna pour some of the oil. This is the finished laksa paste, by the way. That's going to go into a jar. That's what it looks like, right? So this is this basically took about ten minutes to fry up in my thermal cook. And as you know, the beauty of the thermal cook is that you can process everything in there and then turn it on and let it cook away. So very minimal, um, you know, stuff to wash up, to clean up, and to basically you don't have to stand over the pot to stir. It. And you notice how. Um, at the end of it, when I open up after it's been sauteing, that's been a little bit. So uh, the alternative to using this would be standing over the stove, cooking this and having it spit all over your hands, right? So and spitting all over your your, your kitchen stove and stuff. So I've got this, and this is what I prepared earlier. Like I said, I pre I pre boiled and pre poached the uh, some of the ingredients. So I've got some egg in there, boiled egg, some fresh prawns, and these are my vermicelli or rice sticks. You can buy them at Asian grocery stores. And I would usually say with rice sticks, the way you use it is just soak it in hot tap water um, till it's softened and then boil it, right? Um, this particular brand, for some reason, uh, took a little bit more effort when I boiled it. Usually when you soak it in hot tap water, it will kind of like completely soft because usually they come in cakes in, 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 in like hard uh, cakes. And when you soak it in water, it should just completely soften up but I found that soaking it for the longest time did not so, um, soften it up at all, so I ended up boiling it um, a little bit longer than I usually would, okay? So I guess different brands of fresh rice noodles just behave differently, um, is what I'm trying to say. So don't stress out too much about your Asian ingredients, um, um, you know, in terms of following my recipes to the letter, okay? Now I'm just gonna pour this in. This is quite thick, I think I could have, I think I put a little bit too much coconut cream in here and not enough water. It doesn't matter, but I just want to show you this. The car didn't measure anything when I reconstituted this. I just want to show you the aesthetics of this particular dish. I'm not even remotely hungry because I already ate dinner. But now I'm going to have a bowl of lobster to deal with at the end of the night. Okay, this is a little bit more yellow than I would usually make it because I didn't really measure too much um, with the fresh ingredients either. Okay, and and usually if you have a fried onion, you just sprinkle some fresh fried onion over the top, and that just makes a really really nice. Finish to it. And what I'm going to do, remember the sambar blanche we made a couple of weeks ago, if you like a bit of a uh, kick to your laksa, you can add a dollop of that as well, right? And there you have it. Uh, how to get a good shot of this, I'm going to take a photo so you can see properly. Um, obviously, I can't tip this over too much. So, that's 
the last summer month. You know what? I might just grab the camera and hold it over the top. So I'm running two separate broadcasts here, so hopefully, okay. That's one. If you can see that. And it's always hard to kind of like reposition the camera after the fact. Okay, that's one. And for those of you watching off the other feed, um, hope you can see this. I can't really see what I'm holding because I don't have one on display. But uh, the photo always turns out better. So I'll take a photo of this and post it on social media. Uh, let me see if this camera is facing the right way. Like I say, it's not always a good idea to play around with camera angles. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, of course it's pointing downwards. <laughs> let's move this up. Okay. There you go. Okay, guys. Um, winner of the optimum, the free optimum thermo cook. Um, let me see if I can find it. I hope I haven't lost it. Give me a second. Um, okay. Oh, no. It was sent through to me very late last night. The winner. Are you ready for this? The winner of the optimum thermal cook valued at a thousand dollars. Okay. Now, apparently, they've been advertising it as a mystery prize. It is, in fact, a thermal cook, right? Um, the winner is Kathy Gilts from Brisbane. Kathy Gilts from Brisbane and uh, Ruby, the company that uh, distributes this product. Is going to be in contact with you shortly, Kathy. So uh, congratulations! Thank you so much, everyone, for actually taking part in this series and for um, putting up with all the technical glitches and putting up with uh, my son Noah running around. Like I said, uh, if you follow me on social media, you know that's one of my kind of. Like, yeah. I even talked about it on television today. That was the whole reason why I was on television was basically to talk about the integration of Noah in my business. Um, so I'm going to be. Um, Continuing, there's a Facebook group if you're not a member of it. I've been posting some random stuff about, you know, um, things um, associated with the thermal cook and associated with Asian cooking um, over and above these uh, series of broadcasts. So I'm going to keep posting there. So um, if you're not already a member, look for the Optimum Thermal Cook uh, live broadcast um, Facebook group. It's a closed group. And I'll continue to maintain it because there's still a lot of interaction there. I love the fact that some of you guys have been attempting these recipes and posting them online. Um, and I, I really want to do some of mine. I know this series is uh, officially finished, but I'm, like I said, I'm going to be continu uh, continuing with like uh, content with regards to Asian ingredients. I'm going to do a, uh, basically a live broadcast where I can show you close up what the uh, laksa leaves look like and how they're different to some of the other leaves, just to get people to wrap their heads around thinking about shopping for Asian ingredients and making sure they make the right choices um, at, uh, when they do so as well. So again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me, and I will uh, I, I'll continue. Uh, I hope to continue to interact with you online and on uh, my email, and I will catch you again. Thank you, guys. Start broadcast. Okay. If I can.